The late Roman history of Thessaloniki begins with a tetrarchy, the College of Four Emperors established by Diocletian to deal with the empire's multiplying problems. Each tetrarch required a capital of his own, near a threatened frontier. And one tetrarch, Galerius, set his capital here, in Thessaloniki. Thessalonica, as the Romans called it, had long been the capital of the province of Macedonia. Now it became an imperial capital and needed a palace. Galerius duly built one, and we see part of the remains here in front of us. The tall bit off to the left was a bath. Ahead of us, through that door, was what appears to have been a throne room. Much more laid us behind, as we'll see in a moment. The palace of Galerius was laid out in a long axis. On one end, which we just saw, was the throne room. On the other was the rotunda, meant to serve as the emperor's mausoleum. Between, connecting the axis of the palace with the Via Ignatia, was the Arch of Galerius. We'll go there next. The Arch of Galerius marked the intersection of the processional way that made up the axis of the palace with the Via Ignatia, which, as you can see, is still a very busy street today. Originally, it had eight piers. Only three survive, but two of these still bear reliefs that commemorate Galerius' victory over the Persians in 297. He appears beside his fellow tetrarchs, offering sacrifice and thanksgiving for his victory. Other scenes show episodes from his battles. Here's the panel showing Galerius and his fellow tetrarchs sacrificing. If we back up, you can see some battle scenes here. In fine, deep relief, that's a home for modern pigeons. It don't appear to be in any chronological order. And they're all in the fine tetrarchic style, which emphasizes a sort of crude realism over any classical niceties. This is the rotunda. Though similar in design to the Pantheon at Rome, it's only about two-thirds the size. It was meant to serve as Galerius' mausoleum, but it was never completed during his lifetime, and he was buried in what's now Serbia. Around the end of the 4th century, it became a church, and served as such until the 17th century, when it became a mosque, whence the minaret you see on the left. This is the church of Panagia Akerapoietos, named for a famous icon of the Virgin, said not to have been made by human hands. It dates to the mid-5th century, and still retains its original Theodosian-style capitals, as you can see. Also original are the mosaics beneath the arches. Though supplanted by Constantinople as imperial center, Thessaloniki remained the most important city in late Roman Greece, especially after the Slavic invasions of the 7th century, which overran much of the Greek peninsula. It was in this period that the church in front of you, Hagios Demetrios, St. Demetrius, reached the apogee of its glory. Built in the early 5th century and restored after a fire two centuries later, it commemorated the martyr St. Demetrius, who was imprisoned in the Roman baths beneath the present structure. It became an important pilgrimage center and remains so today. The building itself was basically intact until 1917, when it was tragically burned by the Great Fire of Thessaloniki. What you see now is a more or less faithful reconstruction of that building, but a few original details survive inside. This is the iconostasis, the wall in front of the altar. On the pier to the left, you'll see two mosaic panels, both set up, we believe, as votives during the 7th and 9th centuries. The one facing us shows St. Demetrius with two children. On the pier to the right of the iconostasis, there are two more of these votive panels. The larger one facing us shows three figures. The central figure with the circular golden halo is St. Demetrius. He is flanked by the eparch and archbishop of Thessaloniki, men responsible, we believe, for the reconstruction of the basilica in the 7th century. From the 8th century onward, Thessaloniki was the second city of the Byzantine Empire. It was especially important in the 11th and 12th centuries after the conquest of Bulgaria. It was in this period that the church in front of you, Panagia Chalkion, 
Madonna of the Coppersmiths, was founded. The date, 1028, is given by the inscription over the door. It is given in Anno Mundi, the year of creation, which was 6537. It's a classic Middle Byzantine church with a cross and square plan, centered on a square naus, or nave, crowned by a dome. There are fragments of the original frescoes inside, but unfortunately the church is closed today. So all we can see is the facade. Between the crippling civil war, between the forces of John V and John VI, the revolt here in Thessaloniki of the zealots who killed all the city's nobles, and of course the steady advance of the Ottoman Turks, the 14th century was a bad time to be Byzantine. But it coincided with the artistic efflorescence that we call the Paleologan Renaissance. The most famous product of that period is the Kora Monastery in Constantinople. But here in Thessaloniki, there's another representative in the Church of the Holy Apostles, which has some wonderful 14th century frescoes. I'll go in and let the frescoes speak for themselves.